year 10. Uh, another presentation for you. Uh, finishing off a little bit of our work with the sectors today, but beginning with the starter activity. So I'll read through, same as I have been, have been doing the last few presentations, so you understand what the questions are about, just in case you can't read them properly. Expand, 2AX, and in a bracket, 3A plus 2X. Two brackets next to each other, 2X plus 4 in the first bracket, X minus 3 in the second bracket. Simplify, 8A plus 5C minus 4A plus 2C. Simplify, 8A multiplied by 2C multiplied by 2A. Evaluate, 5 cubed. Evaluate, now I've got a square root sign with a 24 inside added to 5 squared. Factorise. 8ac plus 4c. Factorise. x squared minus 3x minus 18. Solve. 25 equals 10 minus 3x. Solve. 9x plus 14 equals 2x plus 63. Find the value for x. Calculate y in this last example. To do with triangles and angles. Find the value for the angle Y. Make sure you've written those down. Maybe turn your presentation off for a few minutes while you work your way through uh, those various problems and you get your solutions. When you turn your presentation on, I will go through the solutions for you. Okay, expand out. Multiply everything inside the bracket by what's outside the bracket. 2ax <coughs> multiplied by 3a. 6a squared x. 2ax multiplied by 2x. 4ax squared. Two brackets multiplied together. <coughs> Foil. First terms. 2x multiplied by x gives me 2x squared. Outside terms. 2x multiplied by minus 3 gives me minus 6x. Inside terms, 4 times x gives me plus 4x. Last terms, plus 4, positive 4 multiplied by negative 3 gives me a negative 12. Bring together the like terms, 2x squared minus 2x minus 12 is our result. Simplify. So it's about bringing the like terms together. We've got A's and we've got C's. So we can bring the like terms together and combine like terms. So the A's, 8A, subtracting 4A gives me 4A altogether. 5C added to 2C gives me 7 lots of C altogether. 8a multiplied by 2c multiplied by 2a. Well, the numbers we can multiply together. The numbers we can multiply together. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 16 is 32. a times a is a squared. And then we've still got c to deal with. 5 cubed. A really useful number to be able to remember because this will crop up, will crop up in lots and lots of questions over the next few years. Five cubed. Five times five is twenty-five. Five times twenty-five gives me one hundred and twenty-five is my result. Try and remember that number. Five cubed is one hundred and twenty-five. What's the cubed root of one hundred and twenty-five? It will be five. So it's really worth remembering that. Okay, the square root sign. We've got 24 plus 5 squared, so plus 25. So altogether we've got the square root of 49. What's the square root of 49? What multiplied by itself makes 49? The square root of 49 is 7. Factorise. What is common between these two terms? Common between those two terms is the number 4, 
to factor of both 8 and 4, and C is in both of those terms. If I take out a 4 and I take out a C, I'm left with 2A. If I take out a 4 and I take out a C, I need a 1 there. 4C multiplied by 1 will take me back to 4C. Really important, that one. A lot of people forget that x squared minus 3x minus 18, a quadratic expression. Factorise that into two brackets, x at the front of each bracket. Two numbers that multiply to make minus 18, but they add to make minus 3. One of, them, one of the two numbers has got to be negative, because when you multiply them together, you get a negative result. Magnitude, the larger number, is going to be the negative number. And the two numbers we need here are minus 6 and plus 3. 25 equals 10 minus 3x. Okay, so we've got to get the x on its own. Subtract 10 from each side. 15 equals minus 3x. We've got to get the x on its own. Now it's not a case of just dividing both sides by 3 because we'd still have a minus x here. We've got to divide both sides by minus 3. So x equals minus 5. Take away 2x from both sides. Balancing both sides. So as you do the same thing to the left hand side as you do to the right hand side, you're not changing the overall value of the equation. So we've got 7x plus 14 equals 63. Subtract 14 from both sides. We're trying to get that x on its own again. So 7x equals 49. Divide both sides by x. x equals 7. Okay. Last example, last problem today. Got a triangle, got 180 degrees inside a triangle. We know we've used 74 degrees up. But we don't know this angle to help us get to Y. What we do know is we've got a straight line here, 180 degrees on a straight line, gives us a value of 56 degrees for this angle here. 56 added to 124 would take us back up to 180 degrees, 180 degrees on a straight line. We've now got 56 and 74 that we've used up. So what have we used up all together? We've used up 140 degrees. 56 out of 74 would give us 140. Is that right? I'm sure about that, not them. Uh, it's 80. It's 130 degrees we've used, isn't it? 130 degrees. And that would give us 50. So y equals 50 degrees. Okay, that's our start completed. Um, now, the main part of the presentation shouldn't take too long today. A little bit of revision about what we were doing yesterday. The radius. The line going from the centre point to any point on the circumference. So from here centre point to the uh, circumference is a radius. From here to any point on the circumference is a radius. The whole way across the circle through the centre point is a diameter. A line touching the edge of a circle is a tangent. Now we talked about sectors a lot yesterday. A sector We've got our centre point, we've got a radius going out to the circumference, we've got a radius going out to the circumference, we've got an arc 
So a curved line. The area of this sector we were working on yesterday they we're going to think about the perimeter of the sector now be, be mindful that I've used the word perimeter there the perimeter of that sector the perimeter of that sector what's it made up of it's made up of this radius it's made up of this radius and it's made up of the length of that arc it's really important that if a question asks you for a perimeter you understand exactly what it's asking you go through the formula yet again you should have these in your head the circumference of a circle pi d circumference of a circle all the way around a circle the perimeter of a circle 2 pi r the area of a circle pi r squared again today I'm going to use the value of pi to make the calculation simple on the board. I'm going to say pi is equal to 3. You will have an accurate value of pi on your calculators and on your phones. So please use that in the calculations when you go on to do exercises, unless you're told otherwise. Right. So, yesterday we talked about area. Today we're talking about circumference and the version of the formula that we're going to concentrate on is 2 pi r. Circumference of this whole circle 2 pi r. 360 degrees all the way around. We've used up all 360 degrees. 360 divided by 360 one whole one. So 2 pi r gives me the length of that circumference. <coughs> Semicircle. So the length of that arc, the length of this curved line, 2 pi r, but divided by 2, because it's only half the way around the whole circle. For this quarter circle, this quarter circle, 2 pi r would be the whole way around the whole circle, but this is only a quarter of it. So that arc length, this curved line, would be 2 pi r divided by 4. And again, as I showed you yesterday, what proportion of the circumference of the circle is involved in this arc? 180 degrees worth has been used up out of 360. So it's half the circumference of the whole circle. Quarter of the distance around the whole circle has been used up here. 90 degrees worth out of 360 gives me that quarter. So very, very similar to what we were doing yesterday. <clears throat> where we've only used up 60 degrees, about 360 degrees, the whole way round, the whole circle would be 2 pi r. How much have we used up? We've used up 60 degrees out of our 360 degrees. And we're not looking at area today, we're looking moment at arc length. So that's just the length of this curved line. Okay, so that arc length at about 360 degrees all the way around is used up 60 degrees. So the fraction of the whole circumference that we've used up is 60 divided by 360. So let's put our numbers in there. 60 divided by 360 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, so I'm taking the value of pi of 3, multiplied by 8. Let's do some cancelling down to make our calculations easy. 
cancel out the zero and the zero. Six goes into six one time. Six goes into 36 six times. What's two times three? Two times three is six. Cancel those out there, and we're just left with eight. Everything else is cancelled out. So our arc length is eight centimetres. The length of this arc is going to be eight centimetres. Let's just check those calculations and make sure I'm right. I'm sure you tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, 60 over 360, yep, that looks right. So that's my arc length. My arc length is 8 centimetres. A lot of the questions, they won't just ask for the arc length, they'll actually ask for the perimeter of this shape. What we've got to do is find the perimeter. The perimeter is the arc length plus 8 centimetres here plus another 8 centimetres here. So the perimeter is actually going to be 24 centimetres. Okay? That's the bit that people sometimes forget. When the question asks them for the perimeter of that shape, the distance around the outside of that shape, they forget to add in the length of these two straight lines here. Okay, next example. So again, we'll start off by looking at the arc length. How much of our 360 degrees have we used up? We've used up 40 out of 360. Multiplied by 2 pi r, our formula, so substitute our numbers in. 40 over 360 multiplied by 2, multiplied by pi, multiplied by r, which is 12, that length. Let's do some cancelling out to make the calculation easy for ourselves. 4 goes into 36, 9 whole times. Uh, 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 3 times, then 3 goes into 12 4 times. So we're left with 2 times 4, oh, it equals 8 centimetres again. But that's the arc length, so this is 8 centimetres, that arc length there. So if you're asked for the perimeter, the perimeter is the arc length, 8 plus 12 plus 12, 32 centimetres. Okay, second example. Is that reasonable? Yeah, it looks reasonable to me. Last example. <coughs> So arc is going to be, how much have we used up out of our 360? We've used 120 up out of our 360, multiplied by 2 pi r, substitute in our numbers, 120 over 360. Multiply by 2, multiply by 3, taking 3 as a value of pi, and then r is 5 centimetres here. So our cancelling down, 120 goes into 360 3 times, 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 3 once, we're just left with 2 times 5, so our arc length, <coughs> our arc length is 10 centimetres. So our perimeter, the shape, is our arc length of 10 centimetres, plus 5, plus 5 for our straight lines. So our perimeter is going to be 20 centimetres. Okay? 
Okay, the perimeter of that shape is going to be 20 centimetres. Okay, so the bit that I'm sure you fast forwarded to, let's go through our catchphrases. Right, these are the ones I set you in the last presentation. I'd imagine everyone got that really, really quickly. Four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive. Really, really easy. This one's a bit tougher. Took me a lot of work to get this one. Took me a lot of work to get this one. Mascara, and you've got a cross, an X in front of it. What is mascara? What could an X across represent? other than just the letter X. If you want to think about those two points, now I've given you a clue, you can turn the presentation off and then you can turn it back on again. Mascara, what is it? It's makeup. What else could an X across be used to denote? Could denote, signify a kiss on a car or a letter. So you've got kiss, You've got makeup. The expression, kiss and makeup. Tough one, that. Definitely a tough one. Alright, new ones for today. I think the first one's relatively straightforward. An I, an N, a T, an O, an X, an I, a C, an A, a T, a D, e, and a D. That's relatively straightforward. You should get that one. The second one again today is a little bit tougher. This took me a long time to work this one out. It's the word blonde and a black square. Okay. I'll give you the solution to that. That uh, uh, those two catchphrases in uh, the next presentation that you see, okay? Right, hope that's been useful. There is, uh, there are worksheets on for you. I don't think this, I'm gonna be uh, placing any SAM learning on for you uh, for this, to go with this presentation. Um, I might, in fact, I might just put you on a, a revision uh, SAM learning exercise. Uh, hope that's been useful. Be safe, be healthy. Thank you very much.